from a very frigid Wisconsin, this is Kurt Berglund with a demo of triple play baseball. I've been asked, and I do take requests to uh, demonstrate the game. I'm not going to be calling the game. I'm going to walk you through how to play the game with a couple of the teams uh, from 1974, the Oakland A's, the World Series champs, at the American League East division champion Baltimore Orioles. But the teams aren't as important as just getting a sense of how to play the game. And I was asked to do another demo to kind of show how that works. And so here it is in all its glory. Um, so let's get to it. Triple play is a game that uh, uses three D10s. I read them in red, white, and blue order when I'm going through this. So when you see me roll, that's what I'm doing. Uh, these are the lineups that we'll use for the visiting Oakland A's. It's Billy North in center field leading off. Bert Campaneris betting second at shortstop. Sal Bando betting third at third base. Reggie Jackson betting fourth in right field. Joe Rudy betting fifth in left field. Gene Tennis betting sixth at first base. Angel Mangual batting 7th, he's the DH. Ray Fossey batting 8th, he's the catcher. And Dick Green batting ninth at 2nd base. So, when you look at a triple play card, you're looking at a number of things. First of all, you'll notice that the stats are on the bottom, complete list of stats. Uh, player attributes are down this column to the right. And then um, you get the defense. So, what position do they play? What's their range like? What's their error number? And what's their throwing, if that's applicable? All right, so that goes across there. Then you'll notice that the card is set up in splits. So these are ranges from for the batter from 0 to 499. And then for the pitcher, that goes from 500 to 999. Here is the Orioles order for the homestanding Baltimore Orioles. Rich Coggins leads off in right field. Bobby Gritch is second base. Batting third is Don Baylor in left field. Boog Powell bats fourth. He's the first baseman. Tommy Davis bats fifth. He's the DH. Earl Williams bats sixth. He's behind the plate in this game. Brooks Robinson bats seventh. He's at third. Paul Blair bats eighth. He's in center field. And Mark Belanger bats ninth, and he's at Shortstop, the pitchers in the game for the uh, Oakland A's, it's Catfish Hunter, 25 and 12, and 41 starts. And for the Orioles, it's Jim Palmer, 7 and 12, in an injury-plagued year, 26 starts, and a 3.27 ERA, while Palmer's was 2.49. All right, so we're going to do, I don't know, three or four innings to get through uh, all of the stuff that you need to do to know how to play triple play um, and feel comfortable with it. It's a game. I will tell you that I don't work for this company. I don't know anybody that does, but I am having a good time with the game. I am enjoying it. And... Um, and uh, so I think it's worth a look, at least uh, for you. So here we are. Um, first thing you have to do before you start a game is to do the weather. We are in Baltimore's Memorial Stadium. We are playing a day game in September. All right. So we're going to roll two dice and see what our weather is like. It's a 91 that we rolled. And what that means is that it is a cool September afternoon. Now, what does that mean? Well, if we look at our weather key, we see that a cool afternoon increases the starter stamina by four. Well, what does starter stamina mean? Well, in triple play baseball, they go by uh, stamina numbers is batter's face. So you can start to be tired after this number. Well, if we're adding four on a cool September afternoon, Palmer's becomes 38. 
So in the demo that we're gonna do, stamina is probably not gonna be too much of a problem. But, and you can see Jim Hunter's goes from 41 to 45. Um, so he can really go a long way. Batters faced before starting to fatigue. All right, and I think with that, we are ready to go. Billy North Stamp steps in the batter's box against Jim Palmer. And here we go with the roll of the three dice. I rolled an 882, which would be on Palmer's card. Billy North is a switch hitter. He's a BSP. If that matters, we'll, we'll, it could affect a chart uh, reading later. 882 falls between 877 and 889. So that is a strikeout. And North strikes out to start the game. And we're underway at Memorial Stadium. Now it's Bert Campanaris. Four ninety-two lands on the batter's card. Palmer is a right-handed pitcher. Four ninety-two is an easy fly to center field because it falls between four forty-six and four ninety-nine, and that is out number two. Salbando, the captain, steps in against Palmer, and it's a two forty-one, which is on Bando's card against a right-handed pitcher. 241 falls within 241 to 354, and that's a walk. So Bando draws a walk with one out, and that brings up Reggie Jackson. Two ninety-eight against a right-handed pitcher, Palmer. Two ninety-eight falls within the two twenty-eight to three sixty range, so that is a walk. Not sure how well you can see this, but the hits and on-base chances are a little bit, uh, they are in color if you buy the color cards, and they are a little bit more bold uh, than the outs or the chances for outs uh, are on a batter or pitcher card. Two outs, two on, Bando at second, Jackson at first, and Rudy is up. 101, uh, sorry, 301 is on Rudy's card. A 301 falls between 297 and 388. And so that is a strikeout. And the A's are done in the first inning. And just like that, we got one inning under our belts of triple play baseball. Most of the information that you need to play the game is right off the card, but... There are some charts in the game, so if that bewilders you, then that's something to think about. But um, the charts are, are important, but they're not referred to on an every batter basis, as you can tell. All right, Rich Coggins is up against Catfish Hunter. 566 is on the pitcher's card. Coggins is a left-handed batter, so 566 is a range check for the outfield, and here comes uh, one of those charts that I was just mentioning. And uh, what happens, if you notice, if you look at the cards, what you'll see, and you can see this right now, is if you look at these cards, on the cards themselves, the outs go to center field. But if you're doing a range check or an error check or a deep drive, they could go someplace else. And so the charts direct you to the other outfield. Um, possibilities. All right, so we have to do a couple things first. We have to determine what kind of batter Coggins is. He's an LSP. All right, so now to do the range check, we look in the LSP column and we roll two dice. I'm going to roll the red and the white dice. And we get a 78. And a 78 on an LSP is over the head left field. Well, what does that mean? Well, we have to check the left field. First of all, we have to determine if we're on grass or turf. And if you remember Baltimore's Memorial Stadium, you know that that's a grass ballpark, or was a grass ballpark. And we're looking in the over the head row here. And so next thing we need to do is to check Joe Rudy's um, range. 
And Joe Rudy's range, we look on his card, there's his position, and there's his range AV, which stands for average. Either that or he was the guy that wheeled in all of the VCRs into his middle school classroom. Either way, he's an AV, and this would be his column. So we're in the over the head because we rolled that off the LSP, and we're in the AV columns. We either have running catch or off the wall. And it's a 0 5. So we have a running catch. Now, what does that mean? Well, now we need to look at our range outfield key. And this comes pretty easily, but we'll do it. It says fielder makes a running catch. So Rudy makes a running catch on down the line or into the gap. The runner on third scores. On over the head, runner on third scores, runner on second may try for third. That's where we're at. Over the head, runner on third would score, except Rudy made the catch and there's nobody on. So that is the resolution of our play. So on the cards, the plays are to center field, but when you're doing a range check or an error check or a deep drive, they could go someplace else. And sure enough, this one did to left field. Next up is Bobby Gritch. Six thirty-eight is our roll, so it's above five hundred. It's on Hunter's card. A six thirty-eight is a regular grounder to shortstop, where Belanger, I'm sorry, where Campanaris makes the play and throws to tennis for two outs, and now Don Baylor. Two outs, nobody on against Hunter. 278, so it's on Baylor's card because it's 499 or less. A 278 is a regular grounder to second base, so it's Dick Green throwing to tennis, and it's a 1 2 3 first inning uh, for Catfish. So no score after one. Jim Palmer comes back out. And Gene Tennis stands in. And the pitch is a 279 against a right handed Jim Palmer. The 279 falls between 209 and 339, and so that's a walk for Tennis, third walk of the game for Palmer. And Mangual steps in. And they said would be the next Clemente. Okay. And the pitch is a 148. A 148 is a... Falls between 136 and 160. And so that gives us a double play grounder to second base. And what that means is that if it is possible, the double play is turned and the batter is out, and so is the runner. Um, and there is a runner on first base, so it is possible. So it turns into a 4-6-3 double play, and there's two outs just like that. Now it's Ray Fossey with two outs and nobody on. 4 21 is falls in this range 397 to 499 it's an easy fly to center field and that's three out so you can see that while there are charts in the game most of the action is coming right off of the player cards that you get and the charts have a fair amount of precision for what's happening so if you like narrative in your game um there's a fair amount of that here as well. You get a pretty specific outcome. 647 is next. Boog Powell is a left-handed batter. 647 is a regular ground ball to second base for a lefty. And Dick Green throws to Gene Tennis for the out. And here comes DH Tommy Davis. 130, 130 against a righty is a ground ball base hit center field for Davis. 
And now you might be thinking, oh, well, maybe we'll see some stealing here, but uh, not a fast man anymore at this point in his career. So Tommy's gonna stay at first base and see if Earl Williams can pop one. Catcher for the Orioles, a pitch from Catfish, is an 862. And an 862 is an easy fly ball to center field unless he's tired. Now let's talk about that for a minute. Um, tired is when a, when a uh, pitcher fatigues in triple play baseball, you do not have to remove that player, that pitcher, immediately. Instead, uh, you can leave him in and try and get him to go further in the game um, if you want to. Uh, there is, however, a consequence for that, as you might guess. And so, um, here we go. Here's what happens. So, um, we have an 862, which is a strikeout. I'm sorry, no, it's not. It's an easy fly to center field, and it says tired in, with a question mark. So you're checking to see if he's tired. Well, we have a cool September afternoon, so it's stamina plus four, so it's 45 batters. So we're a long way from Hunter maybe being tired. But if he was, then we would say an exhausted pitcher deep with an exclamation mark. Do not adjust further, non-tired pitcher, easy fly ball. Well, all right, so for a deep, the, there's a separate chart that we would look at. So what the easy fly ball could turn into then, depending upon your ballpark, is a deep drive that turns into an extra base hit or a home run. So there are consequences for keeping in the pitcher too long. Um, as the game goes along, but of course we're a long way from doing that. Now, um, the other way that you can become exhausted or become tired is if you allow five runs, five earned runs, uh, or seven total runs to score in an inning. Um, so that can accelerate how quickly a pitcher becomes tired in a ball game five earned runs or seven total runs okay all right so it's two outs and tommy davis runs back to first base and it's brooks robinson up now 844 against a right-handed pit batter is ooh, and sure enough we get a deep so brooks gets a hold of this one and now we get a chance to look and see what happens on a deep hit? Um, okay, so. Uh, all right, so the first thing that we do is to Look at the batter's power number. Now the batter's, in this case, is, um, this is divided into splits as well. Robinson's power against a right-handed batter is, a pitcher is a one. So we're looking in the one column of our chart. And here is that chart. Chart's right here. So now we're gonna roll two dice, and it's an 11. So an 11 on a one means the distance is one, all right? So when the distance is one, um, okay, now we roll a one ten-sided die to see where it goes. So where did this one distance go? And we rolled a nine. And Brooks Robinson, if we look at his, is an RSP batter. So we look at this row. The RSP is here, and the nine is goes into right center field. 
All right. So in right center field, now we come down here and we look at the ballpark. If the distance is a 25 or better, then that's gone. Well, it's not gone uh, because the um, hit went to right center field. Now, there's no wind uh, in our game here today, so we have no ballpark effect for weather. Um, and we rolled two dice, and we'll look down here. We rolled our two dice. If the number is greater than the distance needed, the result is a homer. If the result is equal to the distance needed, so if we had rolled something that would have gotten us to a 25, then the HR may be robbed, depending upon the fence at the ballpark. And if the number is less than the distance needed, the runners on first and second, I'm sorry, on second and third advance, runner on first may attempt to advance, but the ball was caught. So that's the third out of the inning. Robinson had a hanger to hit, but he didn't get it, and that is out. Three outs in the second, and that retires the side. All right, Palmer's back up, and it's Dick Green, and then the top of the order for Oakland. One eighty-two is a base hit to right center field for Green. He's aboard, and now North comes up. Now we're gonna have Billy uh, lay one down. So you see what a bunt looks like. Bill North's bunt rating is a five. You find that in his attributes column here. There he is, he's a bunt of five. And here's our bunting chart. We're on grass. This is his column because he's a five, and here's our two dice. It's a 39. The 39 is a sacrifice hit. The SH sacrifice batter is out at first, other runners advance one base. And that's all you do for a sack bunt in triple play. Find the batter's number. Oh, and we didn't, here, we didn't, we can do up here, we can determine where it went by rolling a 10-sided, went to first base. So it's a 3-4 put out on the sack, and that moves green up to second base. Now it's Bert Campanaris. Can't beat. A 0 is a park effect. All righty, so now... Grab our park effect. And we find our American League ballpark effects chart, and here it is. We're in Baltimore's Memorial Stadium. And this is what happens. Now, Campanaris is a right-handed batter. We're gonna roll a couple of D10s and determine what happens here based on looking at this chart. We roll a 97, he's a right-handed batter, and it's a deep drive chance. Okay, deep. All right, so now we need our deep chart. And we check Campanaris' power, which, like Brooks Robinson's last inning, is a one against right-handed pitchers. So we're going to roll and see what that turns out to be. It's a 93. A 93 is a 17. All right, now where did that 17 go? We're going to roll one Zen Sider to see. Roll a six. <laughs> Excuse me. Whew. And Campanaris is an RSP. So we roll a six and an RSP, and that goes to center field. All right, so it's a 17 to center field. Now we have no wind today, 
And we're in Baltimore. And the 17, we need a 29 to get it out. So it's not going to work. And Paul Blair is going to get there for out number two. All right. And now, Dick Green, we have a 17. So runners on, we have a deep drive. And we have the number less than the distance needed. So the runners on second and third advance. So that sends Dick Green to third base with two outs. So the first run of the game is 90 feet away. And it's Sal Bando at the plate with Reggie on deck. The pitch is a 364. And a 364 is a strikeout for Palmer to get out of the jam. So that retires the A's in the third. And here come the Orioles against Catfish. Let's see if we can get an error check here and a stolen base attempt before we call it a day. Here's Blair, 484 is an easy fly to center field against the right-handed pitching Palmer, Hunter, Hunter, sorry. And now it's Belanger. 695, and a 695 is an easy fly to left field. And now it's Coggins. 079. All right, so we have a line out to shortstop. Now let's suppose, just for the sake of argument, that that was an error chance. Let's say it was a 69 that we rolled. All right, so let's go through and show you what that would look like uh, as an error chance. There is a chart for error checks. And the first thing you should do is to determine who it is that's involved here. And that's an eight, so we look up here and it's the center fielder. So if Coggins had made an error check, it would have been to Billy North. Now to do that, we look at Billy North's card and we determine as a center fielder, which is where he is, his error number is 17. All right, so now we roll our two D10s. And this down here is our outfield error check chart. North is a 17. It's a 62, and there's your short fly. And a short fly is the outfielder makes an easy catch and the runners hold. That's what an error check looks like. You find their error number across the top column, and then you look for the row. You roll your two D10s and you see what matches up. And like every chart in triple play, there's a key to tell you to help you out in case you don't intuitively know what it is that's happening. All right, and we're going to do one more thing before we leave, and that is a stolen base attempt. So let's say Coggins gets on base and is going to attempt to steal a base. It's a two-step process. And here we go. All right, the first thing we do is to determine our jump. So for the jump, we look at the hold rating of the pitcher. In this case, the hold rating is up here. It's a two, R-E-H-S, and the hold is at two. All right, so, and we're gonna look at the um, jump number for the base runner. We're gonna say Coggins is on base. His jump is a four. So Hunter's hold is a two. Coggins' jump is a four. We're gonna roll two D10s. And it's a 62 that we rolled. And a 62 means that he holds. The runner does not get a jump and must hold until the next batter. Now, unlike some games, the triple play, you can try each batter. It's not something where you try one time when they're at that base. But let's say that he got the jump and it's time to steal. All right. So to steal, you look at his steal number, which is an eight. He wants to steal second base. There he is. But 
catcher's throwing arm comes into play, and that's Ray Fossey. Ray Fossey's arm is a minus one. Minus one. So that brings um, Coggins down to a seven. So we move him from an eight to a seven for this column. And we roll two dice. And it's a 21. 21 would get us a stolen base. Although there are a variety of other outcomes that you can have as well. All right. So what have we done in our three innings of play? Well, we've learned something about the uh, player cards, the batter card going from 0 to 499 with those outcomes in bold if they're good and colored if they're good in blue. The pitcher card going from 500 to 999, same deal, bold and colored if they are good outcomes for the hitter. We've done an error check, we've done a range check, we've done a bunt, we've done a steal. We've checked the weather. We've talked about a fatigued pitcher. We've done a deep drive, and we've done a ballpark uh, effect check. Those are the basics of, now you can, we didn't do a hit and run, and I'll grant you that one, but uh, there is a chart for that as well, and a way to do that. It's not terribly complicated either. Um, but that is triple play baseball in a nutshell in terms of how you play the game. This was my request to go through and kind of show it one more time. And I'm happy to do that. I'm enjoying the game as I indicated a great deal. Uh, I think it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of depth to it. And certainly there's, there's precision about what is happening in the game, a good narrative. So uh, that's Triple Play. If you're interested in the game, uh, tpbbaseball.info is where to order it or to find out more about it. There's also a helper. Uh, that you can use an assistant, they call it, on the website. I have not tried the assistant yet, but I plan to in January, and I'll be doing another demo with that as well. What the assistant does is it speeds up the chart process. So if you're interested in something like that, I don't mind looking at the paper charts at all, but I want to try out the assistant, and I will demo that for you in January as well. That's Triple Play Baseball. I'm Kurt Bergman. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you're having a wonderful holiday season. So long, everybody.